Hello everyone. Welcome to today's lecture on an extremely important topic, approaches to sustainable development. This is such an exciting and crucial topic, especially as we face global challenges like climate change, poverty, and resource scarcity. We'll explore various approaches that balance growth with sustainability to build a better future. Let's start the today's topic and go through first slide. Let's start with sustainable development. It's a framework that integrates three essential dimensions: economic growth, social equity, and environmental protection. Think of it as three important pillars of a country. If any of the pillars is weak, the country's economy will not run smoothly, and there will always be a risk of an economic collapse. Traditionally, countries relied on indicators like GDP, gross domestic product, and GNP, gross national product, to measure progress. These indicators focus on production, wealth, and monetary gains. But here's the problem: they ignore critical aspects like income inequality and environmental degradation. It's like judging a book by its cover while missing the story inside. For example, a country with a high GDP may appear prosperous, but what if most of that wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few? Or worse, what if economic gains are achieved by depleting forests or polluting rivers? Such metrics fail to capture the true meaning of progress. The shift to modern metrics like the Human Development Index (HDI) marks a pivotal moment. HDI goes beyond numbers and considers life expectancy, education, and living standards. It's a more humane way to evaluate progress, reflecting both well-being and opportunities. It reminds us that development should prioritize people and the planet. And why is this important? Because the challenges we face today, like climate change, resource depletion, and global inequality, require solutions that balance these three dimensions. Sustainable development ensures we meet present needs without jeopardizing future generations. So now we understand that sustainable development is not just about economics; it's about creating a balanced and inclusive future. Let's move to the next slide to see how this idea has evolved over time. Our next slide is positivist approach historical context. This approach emerged during the industrial revolution in 18th and 19th centuries. When factories were booming, cities were expanding and steam engines were transforming transportation. This was a time of incredible innovation, but it came at a cost. The positivist approach, rooted in classical economics, emphasized production and wealth accumulation. Metrics like GDP and GNP became the gold standard for measuring progress, and making money was the main target without considering its long-term impacts. For example, during the Industrial Revolution, cities like London and Manchester became industrial hubs. But this rapid growth led to severe environmental degradation. Think of smog-filled air, polluted rivers, and deforested landscapes. The focus was entirely on short-term economic growth, often ignoring equity and long-term sustainability. Some important features of this approach are: number one, it focuses on immediate gains rather than long-term sustainability. Second, economic progress is measured by increased production and greater resource utilization. And third important feature is that there's little to no consideration for the environmental or social consequences. While this approach led to rapid technological advancements and infrastructure development, it also highlighted the need for a more balanced perspective. The heavy reliance on resource extraction often meant that natural systems were stretched to their limits, leaving future generations to deal with the consequences. So, the positivist approach brought short-term wealth and infrastructure development but failed to address long-term sustainability. Let's see some critiques of this approach into the next slide. Positivist approach modern critique. Now, let's understand why the positivist approach has faced criticism over the years. First, it's important to acknowledge the advantages. The approach led to remarkable infrastructure development and technological innovation. It prepared the stage for industrial and economic revolutions. However, these advancements came with certain drawbacks such as neglect equity this approach ignored equity leading to wealth accumulation by a select few imagine a society where the rich get richer while the poor struggle to survive that's exactly what happened in many industrialized nations 
inequality widened as the benefits of growth were not evenly distributed. Another drawback was ignoring environmental consequences. By prioritizing production, this approach overlooked the environmental costs. For examples, deforestation, water scarcity, and air pollution. Entire ecosystems were disrupted, as industries consumed natural resources at unsustainable rates. It's like using up all the resources today, without thinking about tomorrow. And lastly, there was limited human development. Economic growth didn't always translate into better living conditions. Many nations experienced rapid GDP growth without improvements in health, education, or social welfare. The approach focused on economic growth rather than human well-being. An important point to remember here is that, wealth is not the ultimate goal. It's a means to enhance human well-being and ecological balance. However, the positivist approach often treated wealth as an end in itself, leading to unsustainable practices and inequities. This realization paved the way for more comprehensive approaches. Now, let's move on to the next slide. Multidimensional approach. Multidimensional approach, which is a more evolved and holistic way of looking at sustainable development. Unlike the positivist approach that focused only on production and wealth, this perspective recognizes that sustainability is about balancing economic, environmental, and social dimensions. This approach recognizes that economic, social, and environmental challenges are interconnected. Imagine a spider's web, if one thread breaks, the entire web weakens. Similarly, ignoring one dimension of sustainability can destabilize the entire system. Key principles of this approach include First principle is, economic analysis, which says to move from profit-driven models to sustainable economic practices. This includes adopting cleaner technologies and promoting green industries. Second principle is, corporate environmental responsibility, and it says to implement standards like ISO 14000 to ensure businesses or corporations act responsibly. Companies are now expected to account for their environmental impact, whether through carbon credits, eco-friendly designs, or sustainable supply chains. And, third principle is eco-design, and it says to promote products and processes that are environmentally sustainable. For example, electric vehicles and energy-efficient appliances. These are the examples of how innovation meets sustainability. A very good example of this approach is the rise of renewable energy industries. Solar and wind energy not only reduce carbon emissions, but also create jobs and foster economic growth. This shows how economic, social, and environmental goals can align. This approach is about foresight and balance, addressing today's challenges without creating new problems for the future. Let's take a look at some of the important extensions in the next slide. Let's discuss the extensions of the multidimensional approach. There are three important concepts. First one is Gandhian Gram Swarajya. This idea was rooted in Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy, which emphasizes village-level self-sufficiency. It's about empowering local communities to meet their needs using local resources. Imagine a village thriving without relying on external aid. This not only fosters resilience, but also preserves cultural and ecological integrity. Second concept is deep ecology. This concept was introduced by a Norwegian philosopher, Arne Nais. This approach challenges the human-centered view of nature. It emphasizes the intrinsic value of all living beings and promotes practices like wilderness preservation and population reduction. The idea is to coexist with nature rather than dominate it. And third concept is eco-feminism. This movement connects environmental sustainability with gender equality. It highlights how patriarchal systems exploit both women and natural resources, advocating for a more inclusive approach to development. For example, women-led conservation efforts in Kenya and India demonstrate the power of integrating these values. These extensions enrich the sustainability discourse, offering diverse perspectives and solutions. Let's see a real-life example on the next slide. Example of Eco-Feminism, Chipko Movement Chipko Movement is an inspiring story from Uttarakhand. In 1973, this movement became a symbol of environmental conservation and community empowerment. 
The word chipko means to hug and that's exactly what villagers did. When loggers arrived to cut down trees, the locals, led by women, hugged the trees to protect them. This non-violent resistance highlighted the importance of forests for sustaining livelihoods and ecosystems. Let's see some important points related to Chipko movement. Number 1, raising environmental awareness. It raised environmental awareness and attracted global attention to deforestation and its impacts on rural communities. Number 2, empowering local communities. This movement empowered local communities and showcased the power of grassroots action in shaping environmental policies. And third important point is inspiring global conservation efforts. It became a blueprint for similar movements worldwide and became inspiration of environment conservation effort. This movement reminds us that small localized actions can lead to significant and far-reaching changes. It also highlighted the role of communities, especially women, in driving sustainable development. Now let's see a broader systems-based perspective that is ecosystem approach. So, just turn to next slide. Ecosystem approach overview. Ecosystems approach is a method that views ecosystems as holistic units. Think of ecosystems as intricate networks where every component is interconnected and contributes to the whole. Disrupting one part of the system can have cascading effects throughout. This approach emphasizes number one, spatial heterogeneity. It says that diversity within an ecosystem is crucial for its stability and resilience. For example, a forest ecosystem depends on a variety of plants, animals, and microorganisms to thrive. Number two, resilience. Resilience means the ability of an ecosystem. to recover from the disturbances whether natural or human induced think of how mangroves can bounce back after a storm if left undisturbed number 3 dynamic vulnerability it acknowledges that ecosystems are constantly changing and adapting to external factors making proactive management essential and number 4 interconnectedness it refers to recognizing that sources like forests and sinks like oceans absorbing carbon dioxide a part of a larger cycle and must be managed together an example of ecosystem approach is the preservation of coral reefs these ecosystems are not just beautiful but they also act as buffers against storm surges support marine biodiversity and provide livelihoods for millions of people the ecosystem approach encourages policies that manage entire ecosystems rather than isolated components ensuring sustainability at a larger scale Let's see how this is applied in practice. Let's move on to the applications of this approach on next slide. Applications of the ecosystem approach. The ecosystem approach is not just a concept, it's a practical framework with real-world applications. Let's break it down into four key steps. First step is inventory creation. This step involves mapping and classifying different zones within an ecosystem. For instance, identifying areas of high biodiversity, water resources, or vulnerable species helps set priorities for conservation efforts. Second step is analyze stability factors. This means we need to study how nature works to keep the environment balanced. For example, we need to understand how wetlands purify water or how forests function as carbon sink. This knowledge will help us managing natural resources in better way. Third step is functional analysis. This step evaluates the roles of various species and processes within the ecosystem. For example, bees pollinate crops while predators help control pest populations. And fourth step is sustainable recommendations. Based on the analysis, actionable recommendations are made. These could include promoting ecotourism to fund conservation, implementing sustainable fishing practices or restoring degraded landscapes. These applications showcase how the ecosystem approach balances ecological health with human needs. By managing ecosystems holistically, we can address issues like biodiversity loss, climate change and resource scarcity. Let's now shift our focus to indigenous views for more valuable insights. Indigenous communities around the world have practiced sustainability long before it became a global concern. Their deep connection with nature offers lessons that modern approaches often overlook. 
There are two important principles of indigenous views. First principle is nature is sacred and interconnected. Many indigenous cultures view nature as a sacred entity, not just a resource, which can be exploited. For example, the concept of Mother Earth emphasizes harmony and respect for the natural world. And second principle is seven generations principle. Decisions in indigenous culture are often made by considering their impact on next seven generations, which ensures long-term sustainability. This approach reflects their deep respect for nature and the well-being of future generations. Let's see some examples of indigenous practices. One example of indigenous views is water conservation. Step wells in Rajasthan are the traditional way to store rainwater and provide a reliable water source. Another example is forest stewardship. Amazonian tribes practice rotational farming to maintain soil health and biodiversity. They use small plots of land, allowing the forest to regenerate naturally. Incorporating indigenous knowledge into modern sustainability frameworks can enhance their effectiveness and cultural relevance. Let's move on to next slide to discuss some actionable policy recommendations. To achieve sustainable development, we need policies that are both actionable and inclusive. Here are three key recommendations. To adopt HDI frameworks. Transition from GDP to using tools like the Human Development Index focuses on people's health, education, and quality of life, along with economic growth. And, to strengthen global cooperation. Issues like climate change and resource depletion are global in nature. Collaborative efforts such as the Paris Agreement are essential for coordinated action. And, to integrate indigenous knowledge in development. Policies should respect and incorporate traditional practices to achieve sustainability. For example, empowering community-led conservation efforts often leads to better results than imposing top-down approach. Effective policies must address local needs while aligning with global sustainability goals. Let's summarize everything we've covered so far in the next slide. In this session, we have covered different approaches to sustainable development. Let's take a short recap. First one was positivist approach. Its focus on GDP and wealth creation, it had its own advantages, but ignored equity and environmental costs. Then, multidimensional approach. It's a holistic framework that integrates economic, social, and environmental dimensions. Next, ecosystem approach. A systems-based perspective that manages entire ecosystems for long-term sustainability. And last one was indigenous views. This view emphasizes harmony with nature and intergenerational responsibility. That's the end of today's session. Thank you for your attention. In next lecture we will discuss Unit 4. Issues and Challenges of Sustainable Development of MAD002.